Remember, on February 1, the president commissioned this uh, facility at the Bema camp with the capacity to make Amod bullion vans. Let's go on Zoom. Brigadier General Benjamin Amor Boachi is the board secretary of the Defense Industrial Holding Company, the director general of legal services of the Ghana Armed Forces. Thank you for joining us on Ghana tonight and, and for staying up this late. But first off, I think it must be of concern to you. I mean, with all that we've seen, that there are still some financial institutions who are transporting cash with these modified pickups as bullion vans. Brigadier General. Yes, it is of a concern to us because uh, that is one of the reasons we decided to consider adding a line. Because uh, as you see, having military personnel in pickups holding guns following uh, another soft skin vehicle transiting cars is quite uh, not a good sight because we are not in, in, uh, in the jungle, so to speak. And then if you look at the cost implications, as you deploy one vehicle, just one pickup, carrying about seven soldiers, following one CIT vehicle, each soldier under normal circumstances and paid arrangements with the banks is entitled to some money as per day. So if you look at the money spent on providing fuel, providing per diem for the soldiers, the, the wear and tear on the vehicles, the cost implications are quite high. So from our interactions with the banks, it is on a high side. So when you have the type of vehicles we are assembling, where you have the, uh, a driver, two escorts, and then a teller within an environment where they are very secured. And then other services that we provide, including having a national control room where the vehicles are tracked. And so we have live feet from the vehicles said that anytime any of the vehicles is under distress, we are able to deploy to extricate them from such danger. The security being provided with a smaller number of uh, uh, escorts. In this I case, see. we're looking at two police escorts in one vehicle. We think that the banks at a better position in terms of cost management I see, as but, compared to the existing practice where okay, we have. Okay, okay, that's fine. But how many armored vehicles can you assemble? I mean, where you are, say, say in a year for these, for the banks and other financial institutions? Our purpose of the plant is to assemble armored vehicles for the use of the Ghana Armed Forces and other security services, not only within the country, but also within the sub-region. However, when we realized the need for armored bullion vans, we added an assembly line that is purposely for the armored bullion vans. So depending on the market, we are able to <clears throat> assemble up to about 50 vehicles within a year. Yeah. And, and, you know, we wouldn't want to just assemble vehicles when we don't have uh, clients for it. So depending on the clientele, we should be able to expand I see. The capacity, um, as I mentioned. But how many have you been able to assemble for financial institutions in this country? Because they need it. Well, so far, we have assembled four. And those four are meant for a particular bank. And we are in the process of assembling more. As I said, we do only on demand. We assemble only on demand.
I mean, you see, there's a certain lax, you know, about this situation. And I went down memory lane so that we can all be on the same page. We are here until another bullion van is attacked by armed robbers. And we, we've seen ra running around. So, in your view, while the Bank of Ghana has put some measures in place and you're, what you're doing as well, what should the financial institutions do? to ensure that there's some increased level of safety in transporting cash? I think that the approach being adopted now by the Bank of Ghana as a regulator and then the Ministry of Interior is the best. We know that per the regulations, we're not supposed to be using uh, soft skin vehicles. However, the, the deadline given by the Bank of Ghana, I think, uh, it's up to June this year. Now, if the banks are able to sign on to um, companies that have armored bullion vans, I believe that the risk um, that we face will, to a large extent, go down. And I also believe that if... Um, our model, where we are able to control the movements of the vehicles, we are able to uh, track the movement of the vehicles with all the necessary equipment and gears given to the personnel within the vehicles, including body cams and all that, we will be in a better position to monitor and then mount surveillance on all the vehicles that are being used. When we do that, it's not only going to benefit the banks, but also the police can also benefit significantly with regards to mounting surveillance within the marketplaces where these vehicles will be going. Mm -hmm. And then where we, we, we dismount the personnel in the, on, uh, in the vehicles, that are going to the marketplaces to pick cash and all that. All of them will be, uh, uh, they will have cameras on them. And so their movements will be tracked and the police can, I mean, the intelligence department and units could use them as a intelligence gatherers to enhance the capacities of the various intelligence units. I want to thank you so much, uh, Brigadier General Omar, for your, your time on this. And he's a director of legal services of the Ghana Armed Forces, also with the Defense Industrial Holdings Company of the Ghana Armed Forces on, on this.